Hello and welcome to my custom track tutorial. This is going to be a long form tutorial as probably indicated by the video length that we're going to go from knowing absolutely nothing about anything and we're going to get you into making a custom track, a polished custom track for Mary Kart Wheat. Um, a, this tutorial doesn't show you how to get the um, source files. Uh, we will need them for the game. If you do not have the source files, I uh, you can rip it from your Wii using a revolution uh, application such as CleanRip. Um, but if you want to do the uh, better way, you can go to archive.org, find the Internet Archive, and then here's just a bunch of games. Um, and then you go into 7-zip format, and then you can find Mario Kart Wii um, down here somewhere. Mario Kart Wii, 7-zip, um, uh, and then uh, you're going to need to get WIMS ISO tools uh, and uh, WIMS SCS tools, and then you can go in the command line. Uh, oops, I'm on Windows. Uh, but So I can just run command, and then WIT is to bring up the WIMS ISO tools, which extract, uh, and then paste the uh, absolute uh, path or relative path um, to the, that downloaded file um, after you extract it with 7-zip, but uh, basically I'm already presuming that you have those files. Now, um, I, um, this is the main place that you want to start. This is uh, the wiki. Uh, it has a bunch of tracks released every day, uh, and my profile page is uh, I am I'm here and I've, I've done stuff. Um, I, but the main page that we're going to be looking at is this one, the Creating Custom Tracks uh, page, and this is a good place to start. Um, I, so maybe as a basic overview, uh, what we're going to do, uh, well, we're just going to describe what's going on, what's like a typical Mario Kart Wii file, uh, you know, what we're going to be aiming out to accomplish, then we're going to go into Blender, and start from the basics. Uh, what is the interface? Modeling a few uh, like decoration stuff, and then actually going on making the track. And then we're going to create. Uh, so this is model related, and then a KCL. It does, that's our collision. So how do we know which one should be road? Which ones should be trickable road? Which ones should be flip trick ramps? Um, and then KMP related. How do we know? the checkpoints, uh, the starting point, the respawns, etc. Um, uh, and so it has a bunch of random stuff, but that's not really needed. So you you can go and get all the tools at the beginning, but I'm going to just download them as we need them throughout. Um, so I guess with that said, let's uh, go to Blender and uh, start start downloading. So you can either download 3.1. Uh, I'm using 3.0. Uh, you can use any Blender version 2.8 onwards. Uh, Blender 3.0 has an amazing new uh, render engine, um, but you 2.79 tutorials will not work. Um, or they were, there was a massive UI change from 2.79 to 2.8. Um, so we're going to download Blender and then we're going to launch Blender. And then uh, I, yeah, all right. So we're going to, when you open Blender for the first time, there's a lot. We're going to just pick a new general file. And then, uh, oops, uh, you can always right click to cancel. Uh, so if you hit something, uh, you know, like this, I don't know, you know, for, in my case, I press W, but I uh, actually, <laughs> That doesn't work for that one. But uh, some things you right click to cancel. Um, other times you can control Z. You can go into edit and preferences and then change the uh, undo steps. Um, obviously the more that, uh, I think it's at 32 by default, but the more you increase this, um, the more you'll be able to undo, but also the more memory it's taking up, etc. So uh, we have a cube here we have a camera here, and we have a light here. You're never going to be working with a camera ever. So you can click on an object, 
or you can box select over an object. Uh, for my people that like circle selecting, you can also cir circle select. Uh, not in this case. Okay, I'm not sure what that's all about. Um, but we're not going to use this cam camera, so we're going to select box select it, uh, and then we're going to hit X to delete. Uh, you can also hit the delete delete key, um, which will just delete it, or you hit X and then it'll ask if you want to delete, and then you can either click or you can hit enter. So now we have this light, and lighting, uh, we're, we eventually are going to cover this in our tutorial, um, which you're free to skip, um, and, but it definitely adds um, just a lot of cool stuff. Actually, we might not do lighting. I haven't decided. Let's find out if we're doing lighting or not, shall we? Um, but this is a light. Uh, and we don't need it, so we're going to X to delete, X to delete. Now, we have a cube. Well, first maybe how do we move around in our scene? Middle mouse, um, <laughs> that, that's your answer, middle mouse. And before I forget, um, I'm trying to turn on, trying to turn on uh, screencast keys, annotations. No, okay. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't look like I have screencast keys. Actually, I know I have it. Let me hold on. Um, Add-ons, and then screen cast keys. Huh. Screen. Wow. Okay. I don't know what. But, uh, either way, middle mouse, that's how we orbit, then how do we pan? Uh, shift middle mouse is how we move around, so if I want to go over here, I can shift middle mouse over here. If I want to zoom out, middle mouse, uh, scrolling, on, er, sorry, uh, you, yes, you need a mouse for a blender. Uh, if that was not already obvious, um, yeah, you just need a mouse, period. <laughs> Um, welcome to the 21st century. Uh, and then we're going to, you know, we can move around uh, middle mouse, or we can shift middle mouse to pan, or we can scroll in and out. Now let's say you get stuck way over here, and I'm like really far zoomed in, and I don't know where anything is. I can always go here, and then I can, uh, uh, actually this is, this is kind of embarrassing. I have changed around my, my keys. Um, but it is, I uh, uh, 3D view, where is it? I've linked something. 3D view global? Ah, uh, here. So this is where you go to frame selected. This is what I use all the time for navigation. So what I did, I went to edit, and then I went to uh, preferences, and I went to key map, and then I'm here in 3D view, and 3D view global, and then a frame selected. And then you press a key here, and in my case I use Q. Uh, and what this does, uh, you can either, uh, by default it's number pad period, I do not have a number pad, so I can't use this. I'm also using um, emulate numpad, um, but currently that doesn't uh, work for this functionality either. Um, so in my case, I assigned it to the letter Q, so I press Q, and now since I selected an object, it frames that selected object. And um, yeah, that's what I use all the time. Uh, so if, if I'm working over here, I'm working with an object, then I want to come over here, I select this object, and then I press Q. And then we're good to go. So uh, let's, uh, okay, so we know how to um, move around the scene. We press Q, uh, or whatever you set this key map 3D view, in my case I set it to Q. Um, and that's how you move about nicely. And then let's maybe touch on what all these things are. Uh, this I don't I use too often um, is just a menu that pops up on the side. Uh, 
there can be this menu and this menu. This is the N menu. So if I press N, uh, N for Nelly, the properties panel pulls up. Um, and this isn't used all that often, but uh, sometimes it is. And then this one is the T. Uh, T brings this in and out. N brings this in, T brings this in. Um, uh, okay, so maybe let's start looking at what are, what are these? So uh, file, we're going to maybe use that for save and we're gonna use this for exporting. Edit, we basically just edit preferences. That's, I only go into edit for preferences. Render, we're not gonna be doing that. Window, I have not touched this. Uh, actually, there we go. Sorry, that, that should be better. Uh, and then help, I guess there's stuff here. Um, I, I actually have never looked at this. Uh, so this is the layout. This is where we're gonna be doing most all of our work. Um, a modeling, uh, I'm never, I've never touched this. Uh, you can also just delete. Nice. Um, sculpting, we, I, I don't know if we're gonna touch this in our tutorial or not, um, but it's going to be very basic stuff of I can uh, I maybe smooth and I can just smooth. Uh, in our case, I we need to turn on dynamic topology and then smooth. And maybe let's draw some, and you can see we're sculpting on our mesh. Um, so that's that's a cool functionality of Blender. Will we use this? I uh, I don't think so. And if we do, it's nothing beyond the bare basics. Um, UV editing. We go. We use this all the time. So uh, all of your objects, when we apply textures to them, this is how we say this face has this texture and it and is stretched this way. Um, so we're going to be using this space a lot. Texture painting. Uh, you you can use this if you want to say, um, like draw in dirt over top of your texture, um, but we're never going to use this. I uh, shading we I only use this for this node editor. Um, we're not going to touch much on nodes. Uh, you can get some powerful things with nodes, but just for Mario Kart Wii in specific, uh, nodes aren't uh, all that useful. Um, they definitely are how you get some of that advanced functionality, but most of that we'll be doing through our other editors, not in Blender's node editor specifically. Animation, we're not going to touch this. Rendering, we're not going to touch this. Compositing, we're not going to touch this. Geometry nodes, oh, I didn't know that they added this. Uh, we're not going to touch this. And scripting, yeah, we're not going to be doing any Python now. So, uh, hopefully that made your life simpler, knowing that we're not going to be doing uh, a lot of it. Now, we're going to look at uh, maybe, what do these things do? These are maybe the next things you start at. So this is just your overall scene. Uh, and we don't need to touch this from our Kirby. So that's nice. Actually, we might need to change our render engine. So I was saying three, version 3.0 of Blender got a new render engine. That is, that is uh, Cycles got an upgrade, a uh, significant one. Uh, this one, generic setting stuff, more scene settings, more scene settings, world settings, collection settings, uh, data settings, we're never going to use any of these. Um, here's uh, something important. So if I add a um, array modifier, look, we did something. That's because we're selecting this object. If we have another object in the scene, then a, but if we're selecting this one, then any modifiers will obviously go to the one selected. Um, a, so uh, this is an array, and as you can see, it's just creating an array of our objects. Uh, Control Z. Uh, we can also apply, uh, what would be a good one? Maybe a screw modifier. And then a, maybe let's change some of these settings and make it on the X axis. And we're gonna create more iterations, or maybe let's change the angle less. Um, so modifiers allow you to do some powerful things, 
uh, we're only going to use it for two modifiers at all. Um, and we'll, we'll touch on what those are once we actually get around to those, but they're not, they're not too difficult. Um, but modifiers allow you to get some really cool um, procedural, procedural meaning that you can change values um, without like having something that's fixed. And then only at the very end can you lock it in place, say, yes, these are the settings I want. Um, but otherwise, they're still able to be edited. I've never touched this. Actually, that's not true, but we're not going to touch this. We're not going to touch this. We're not going to touch this. Um, there, um, maybe I'll come back to this, but one problem that you might have, uh, I've only had it a few times, but it was really annoying to figure out because nothing I had touched upon covered this before. Um, but here, this is all your like properties um, of your object in particular. So like here are the UV maps and you want to make sure this is always called UV map. So if you import an object, it might not be called UV map. And this gives you problems when you're um, joining and uh, separating objects later. Um, so just be wary of that. This is an exact replica of our shading editor here. This is the exact same thing as what you see down here. And I, uh, this that's texture painting stuff, which we're not doing. So that's the interface. We can, we're also not doing this at all, um, which we can just bring that down. You can delete it, but that's fine. Um, so now we've described the interface uh, and we'll touch upon these as we need them. Um, I, so let's start, let's start knowing how can we model stuff. Um, <laughs> that's what that's what you're here for. Uh, so we, we are moving around, right? This is the middle mouse, scrolling in and out, uh, zooming around by pressing and holding and shift middle mouse. Okay, great. So uh, let's say we want to uh, uh, go into top view. That's top view. This is the gizmo that allows you to, to top move. You can see here we have gizmos for moving uh, and for zooming in or out. Uh, we can also just do that, um, you know, that that's for like tablet users, basically. So is this gizmo, but you can just click this and you go into top view. I think this is like number pad seven. Um, if you have a number pad, I do not. And my emulate numpad in the edit preferences, uh, emulate numpad does not work. So I do not know what that is, but I, uh, sorry, let's, let's add an object. Well, first let's delete this. Now, how do we add anything? Shift A. Shift A is always how you add an object, or add anything for that matter. Um, depending on the space, just for example, uh, you don't have to remember this, but you can just Shift A in here. And we don't have anything selected, so it doesn't know what to do, but uh, Shift A is the command for adding something. So this is our def default cube, and we've added it back, and we have a new cube in our collection here. If we were to add another cube, we have two cubes, and they're both in the same place. So if I was to grab this cube, G. So this is this is the first uh, hotkey really that we're that we're learning, and y you want to learn these hotkeys. They will speed up your process immensely. You can uh, technically move this object, um, not using hotkeys. Um, that would be by bringing up this T panel, right? We have the N panel over here and we have the T panel here. You can say move and I'm just going to move it. You can do that. Um, but we're just going to be using hotkeys for that. I put T to put it away. So we want to move this object, right? We had X to delete, sorry. Um, we want to move this object. And we bring it here, and we move our camera around. Like, dang, that's not where I wanted it. <laughs> so how do I how do I get it to where I want it? Well, maybe I want to just go on the Y direction. How do I just go on that Y direction, that green direction? That green direction is Y, because uh, as you can see right now, we do this, and well, it sort of went in the green direction. We can go into top view, and then just move it here. That's a perfectly way of doing it. But what if we want its X direction to be the same? What if we want its Z direction? You can see I just did it here. We can set G and then Y, and that locks it to an axis, G, X. 
gz, gy, gx. Now, how do we frame this again? How do we get back to it? Q. Remember, Q. Um, or whatever you set it to, number pad period, if you didn't change it. Um, gx, gy, i, etc. So, uh, now we've moved the cube. Now, how do we scale it? Uh, well, we had g to grab. So, what to scale? S to scale. S to scale. And there's a similar thing here. Sz scales along the z direction. Gz moves it up on the z direction. Uh, Sx scales along the x direction. If you want a fancy trick, you can uh, S shift z, which scales it on anything other than the z axis. But that's that's advanced, and I don't think uh, you're going to be using that too often. Okay, so. We have this cube, or now our cuboid, rectangular prism. Yeah, rectangular prism. All right, uh, sorry, middle school geometry. Um, and then a scale, grab, and then a rotate. How do you rotate? R to rotate. And there's a similar thing as this is currently sort of locked to your view. If you want free rotation, you can do RR, free rotation. That's kind of cool, but basically RX, R Y, R Z, standard stuff. Um, scale, scale, and then here's something fancy. So you can either change. I want to scale it, you know, X globally, or I can scale X locally. And this is maybe this is maybe, you know, th this is just in general very powerful. If I want to make this thinner, scale Z. And in my local axis, so I can shift back to my global, and I can I have a short uh, shortcut for this, and that's scale x x, or that's the wrong way, but scale y scale z z, and you can see we're now doing this on the local axis of the object, like so. Scale x x, and then back in here. So that's a shortcut for accessing this local. Um, thing here. We can also do normal, um, which is another way of doing it. Uh, so just scale on the X, scale on the Y, scale on, you can see it's also local, um, but it's a different type of local, obviously. It's normal. Nah, yeah. Well, it, it makes sense for more complicated shapes other than a cube, where the normal and the local are currently the same. X to delete. Um, now we can add an object other than this cube. Uh, we can add maybe a icosphere and we can zoom in by cube and we can scale it up and we can scale on the Y and we can rotate it on the Z axis. And yeah, and then we can do something, something cool. This is where we actually start getting, we can either I, you know, if I want to build a castle, I can either add a cube, and then I can uh, uh, add a, oops, can't seem to add a cube again. You can either add a cube, and then GX, and then you can even say 1, or GX2, and that brings it amount by that amount. Shift A, cube, GX4. Shift A, cube, GX, 6. You can either build a castle out like that, uh, or you can use the modifier, right? If you remember, we had the array modifier, and then uh, we can even have this going in the native X direction, and then we can build it out that way, right? That's one way of doing it. Or, most conveniently, or the real way to do it, so uh, I guess, one, okay, we have n now multiple objects. Uh, sorry, let me do a tangent. You can shift select. So select, shift select this, shift select that, and then you can press X and it just deletes all of it. Okay, um, but how do, I, how do I get this object bigger? How do I, how do I change it? I, um, I, I could scale it or I could go into edit mode. That's going from here to here. Uh, there's a hotkey for this tab. You're gonna use it all the time. And then you want to go into face mode. So this is vertex mode, and you can 
change or move around vertices, individual vertices, or if you shift select, you shift select two vertices, or three, or four. If you want to deselect, control box select, or you can shift select. I uh, notice when I get this, I don't get, you know, I might not get this one at the bottom, uh, this one here. And you can always control Z and you get back your other selection. But for our purposes, we just want to select a face. And then we're going to, uh, we can also move a face, GX. Typically, you can also select everything. This is by pressing A. A is to select all. And then you can do your similar things of scale, rotating, and uh, rot uh, do a local uh, transformation or um, grabbing, etc. Um, but uh, you don't want to uh, so much scale and uh, things in edit mode because I uh, right now our origin is at this center point you know zero 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 but when we moved everything around scaled it up rotated around look where this origin point still is well we kind of want it inside the object in the middle of the object notice if we uh, s rotate it around and scaled it around in object mode and grab it around if we grab it around, look, this, this origin point stays with the object. But if we do it in edit mode, where we're moving the geometry around, the origin point is still in the center. So that's something to look out for. But in our case, what we did, we selected a face and we just moved around. So now the origin point is still here and we moved it out. Um, here's another one that you're going to be using a lot. E to extrude, E to extrude, E to extrude, E to extrude. Oh wait, I didn't want that. Let me right click that. Problem. Why is that bad? Because, well, th th think about it. I extruded it out. I right clicked. I, I canceled like the movement of how far I want like it to extrude out further but it didn't actually stop the extrusion. So there's extrusion well, with zero movement. So you can see if I grab this face, oh, there's there's geometry coming out of that. You know, I can go GX to move this face on the X direction. And so you just have to be wary with extrusions. Oh yeah, I don't want to right, you know, do it, right click. It's still there, you have to control Z. So that's that's pretty powerful. You know, now we can say we have a cube and we can extrude it out. And then maybe we can scale. Oh, extrude. Extrude, but I don't want to go anywhere. Now I can scale. Look, we have this nice, totally fat, flat face. And now I can't just move it around, but I can extrude it out. See, this is this is how we're getting some complicated stuff. Uh, extrude, scale, extrude, extrude, scale, extrude, extrude, scale, extrude, right click to cancel, scale, out, extrude, scale. Just like that, we created something cool. You know, extruding and scaling. And then maybe we can also uh, tab into edit mode again. Uh, we can select this face, we can uh, rotate it on the x axis and then we extrude and scale. Like that's that's something cool. That's that's how we uh, manipulate our objects. Note this is still in the same object. So if I go and shift A, right? Shift A is to add the object. And then I add a cube just for simplicity. I move this cube out on the X axis, G, X. I scale it in object mode. And then it, note that I can't, I'm, I can only add, uh, I'm going into edit mode, but I've only selected this object. So I can select on this object and go into edit mode by tab, or I can select this object and do stuff with tab. Uh, and to go into edit mode, and then I extrude, uh, scale, extrude, scale, uh, extrude. This gets wonky because we're sort of going into a face and uh, that's gonna be bad. So we're just gonna leave it this as is. So right now, I move this object, it's obviously a different object than this one.
what I can do if I want to edit both of them at the same time. Say I want to uh, extrude out and I, I want to connect up these. Uh, although maybe that's not a good uh, R, R, Y here, extrude uh, GZ. Look, I can, uh, you know, grab face in edit mode. I can maybe GX is to move this face back into edit mode, um, GZ, and then uh, extrude out. So now I want to connect up these, except I can't, right? I can like add an object. Uh, so this is uh, shift right click, and this is your, this is where it adds objects. Otherwise it's just going to default to the origin, which is fine, but it might be nice to just shift A, add an object, and now boom, it's right where you placed it. Right? Shift right click, shift right click, and that's how it knows where to place stuff. So if we shift right click here, and then we add an object, we could do it this way. So now Q to zoom in, right? Q to zoom in. And then we maybe G, Y, G, Z, rotate on the X axis maybe. And then we're gonna scale it on the local Y axis. Like we've sort of connected it, right? But not really. And we could also go into like edit mode, select this back face of this object and scale it out. And then maybe bring it, hide it inside the object. Um, a G Y, and you know, okay, sure, but we st th they're still all different objects, and we might not want that. Um, so what do we do? Um, well, first let's delete this, and then select this one. Select this one. Either order doesn't matter. Uh, it ma does matter for other stuff, but not in this case. And then we're gonna hit Control J. What I mean for other stuff is this: we're selecting Q one, and then cube and if we hit control J it goes to the last one selected cube but if we do it the other way around of cube and then cube 001 and we control J then we get cube dot zero zero one so it's the last one that we select anyways we're gonna merge it into cube and I uh, control J is join so we're gonna join these two objects together note that you cannot do this in edit mode like I can't select this one and this one but now, if I join them, oh, haha. But, uh, if I join them, now I can edit both of them together. So I can select, shift select, and shift select, and I can like scale, and they're both part of the same object. I can edit them both at the same time. I can move them as one object, GX, GY, GZ, scale, etc. right? Now, I want to connect these. Uh, this is maybe a advanced modeling thing. Let me first uh, bring this down, scale it up, uh, and rotate it on the x-axis just to make it easier. Uh, our x scale, um, just easier to see what's going on. Um, I think the algorithm still works either way. Uh, here's maybe an advanced thing. Um, I can go uh, uh, edge. So this is this menu. So let's look. What what do these have? I, uh, this says frame selected. So this is what we've been using Q of, I can zoom into these, you know, if I'm off in the distance here and I hit Q, this is how it brings it back here. Or I can just go view frame selected. Um, select, A to select everything. Um, this gives you circle select or lasso select. Um, and then there's shortcuts next to it, right? This is A, it shows you on the right here. Um, I, we can add a cube just through here, but as I said, shift A is how you add stuff as well. Um, just multiple ways of doing the same thing. Um, you can mirror objects, um, which you can also do as a modifier. Uh, you can extrude, which we just did, um, uh, and other things that we'll get to later. One thing that I'd like to mention here is bridge edge loops. Um, this doesn't happen all the time, but uh, it just nicely bridged our two loops. Um, and there's no faces in the middle anymore. Sometimes you just have to check. I wasn't sure myself. Uh, shift D to, sh uh, sorry, Control Z to undo that. And okay, so what have we done? We have uh, created an object 
we have by shift A, right? And then a, so if we say like, let's add a cylinder. Well, right now it's Q to zoom in. Right now it's here because we shift uh, right click is how we set that point, shift right click. Anyways, we're gonna Q to select it. Uh, you notice that there's uh, settings here so we can uh, increase or decrease the resolution of this for Mario Kart Wii, especially cylinders, you gotta like get them down to even like six or seven. Like they have to be very low poly. Um, they add up. Uh, max for Mario Kart Wii, max Tris is like 25k Tris, but there's tricks, w tracks with 10k uh, Tris or triangles. Uh, no one likes me saying Tris, I don't know why. Um, you can find this at the bottom right. Uh, except you probably not because they remove that as an option. So I edit preferences and somewhere in here. Uh, apologies, I do not know where that is. But uh, Google is your friend there. How do I get settings to go in Blender? Um, and that should show up. Uh, anyways, we have the cylinder. We can tab into edit mode. This is a separate object than this one now. Uh, you can always hit and edit mode, you can hit A to select everything, uh, and then Q to zoom into the object. Uh, we can maybe extrude this out. We can uh, extrude, we can scale, we can grab it, or we can grab it to an axis, or we can grab it and uh, maybe want to go to local. Um, although this might not work once we're in edit mode, uh, this might work better in object mode. Um, one other modeling thing, you can hit I to inset, and then you can hit extrude. And we can hit I to inset, and we can extrude. You can also select multiple faces. Let's select all of these, hit I to inset, E to extrude. Or I, you know, control Z, or you can extrude here. And then we can maybe, here's another cool uh, thing, but I don't use it all that often, is I, I. And this is like a toggle. So if you hit I, I again, then it connects them. But otherwise it, um, you know, connected, non-connected, connected, non-connected, non etc. Um, so now we have each individual thing. And we can I, and then E to extrude in downwards again, and whatever. So that's uh, how you do that. Uh, maybe as some practice, um, model. Uh, a bowl. All right, feel free to give this a pause if you haven't been uh, following along with me, um, and do it. <laughs> Just do it. Okay, uh, hopefully you did that, uh, but we're gonna go, maybe the most natural thing is a cylinder, and we're gonna build off from there. Let's make it higher poly, just for uh, niceness. The amount of verses is 12. Q to zoom in. Um, it doesn't matter where our cursor is really. Let's scale this down in object mode. And then now we're at the, um, like our base mesh. Um, the mesh is just the, um, the mesh is the collection of faces, I guess. And we can scale this out. And you're like, wow, that looks like a bull already. Huh, nice. And then you can extrude it out and we can scale it up, boom. We're creating a bowl, and then we can extrude it up, and we can scale it out. Boom. And now we can take this top face, and we can delete a face. And now we just have this object here that is somewhat bowl-shaped. Nice. Oh, haha. Uh -huh. I controls control S by default. Now you might be thinking, wow, I really hate this. Uh, look. And you would be right. And you can go into like matcap, and you can do um, world, or you can do like random, uh, and then set it to flat or something. Like, wow, that looks god awful, and you'd be right. Um, and you can then turn on like cavity or depth of field, shadow maybe, and you're like, okay, that looks slightly better. So that might be helping you as you go and you model stuff, is to turn on these preferences. But what is this? What about this? This is how you uh, do texture stuff, which we will uh, cover later. 
this is how you activate um, your ray tracing engine. And this is the, the return of this panel, this top panel uh, with the camera icon. If you go to cycles, you can see everything start to take a while. It's lagging behind me because it's uh, doing lighting calculations. There's some default lighting in the background, which you can change in these settings here. Like here, this world, you can change the background color of the world if you really wanted to, not that I want to. So uh, this is your basic no texture, but you can also have it to have textures. Right now, this object does not have textures, so we're not getting anything. Um, or, um, yeah, uh, and let's see, I've covered uh, extrusion, I've covered uh, insets, I've covered scaling, rotating, uh, what different objects are, what these, uh, you know, layout are, what we're actually using in Blender, um, and then next time we're going to start, how do we, um, how do we start texturing? Um, and UV editing, and then a, uh, then we'll probably do uh, creating a simple basic uh, track and a test SES after that. Um, so this is where I'm going to call the first part, and uh, I'll see you in the next part.